Well, hello everyone and welcome to Nothing But Net, presented to you by Fantasy Phenom. I am your host, JC, and today I have with me my co-host, Keith. We will be covering the NBA slate for today, Sunday, December 31st, New Year's Eve. It is a three-slate day, kind of interesting. We'll be covering it pretty in-depth for you, try to help you do some winning. But before we get into that, I'd love for you guys to come check us out on Twitter. You can find us at Fantasy underscore Phenom. While you're there, why don't you come check me out and find me at Liquor underscore Sweet. That's L-I-Q-U-O-R underscore Sweet. And if you're not already listening to this audio podcast on our YouTube page, come check us out there. You can find us at Fantasy Phenom there on YouTube. That's where you want to subscribe to us and hit the little bell right next to the subscription. That way you get automatic updates to all of our uh, posts of the live um, podcasts that we do for the uh, NBA, NFL, and uh, whatever sports are going on at the time that we have, as well as the audio that we do. And there you'll find links to our newly, freshly opened website, our uh, Facebook group, which is rocking, probably the hottest DFS group there on Facebook, and our iTunes, everything else that we have available, you'll find there. So definitely want to come check all that out. And I guess going to have to go ahead and get right into this because it's the... A pretty interesting slate. What are you thinking about today? You you like today's slate, Keith? I don't like the first slate. It's ugly, um, and the main is the main is interesting. The first one is just it's just ugly. Yeah, I I don't much care for the first one whatsoever. It is, uh, I guess, ugly is a uh, polite way to put it. And actually, because of uh, what we were doing and the way we were going about it, I totally forgot. I have to go back here and uh, even get to that first game slate. I even closed that window out because we were paying it no attention whatsoever. So I gotta get to that one here real quick. You got Kyrie Irving on top, 9,100, going against Brooklyn. Um, top point guard of the day, or in the early slate, let's put it that way. Um, he's in a good matchup against Brooklyn. Um, but uh, Oh, that's not the early that's, slate. That's not? That's the prop 30. Oh, the but yeah, we're talking, yeah, you're right, I'm sorry, not the early, but the okay. the first slate is the 330. That's the all day slate, and that's because there is a uh, three thirty game, which happens to be Chicago and Washington. Right, right. That's the one we were talking about. We're just gonna obviously not go over this whole slate because we will be covering the uh, rest of the uh, all day slate as we go over the other two slates, the early and the main. So we figured we would just cover the Chicago-Washington game real quick for anybody interested in playing the all-day slate. And yeah. what do you think of this game? Anybody in particular you really like, or do you look into fade? Or well, um, I would. I mean, this is the early game, so if I was playing the all-day slate, I might fade. But um, John Wall looks good. Um, I like Grant as a guard. Uber 
interesting matchup between the both of them. Uh, power forwards. Um, I like marketing with Price. Morris, if he's hot, then you know what he can do. Um, and and uh, Scott Fat, he just had a baby too, so um, that's something to be interested in. And uh -huh. the, wise, the narrative, <laughs> yeah, the which was a, a major topic was. tonight in our chat room. Was it? Unbelievable. And centers, if I had to pick between Gortat and Lopez, I'd probably take Rolo. Uh, he's a little bit more upside. He do get the rebounds, more rebounds than Gortat. That's it. Yeah, I would have to say that I am probably 110% behind you on everything you said. I mean, I don't want anything to do with Gortat. He can give you a, a good game every once in a blue balls. And I, don't, I just don't trust this fucker. I mean, you look at his last two games, the Houston game, 18 minutes, 18 points. Previous game, Atlanta one of the top three worst teams defensively against the goddamn centers. He gives you 20 minutes and 5.8 <laughs> fucking points. And then the game before that plays Boston, 26 minutes, 35 fucking points. So, fuck that. I want Robin Lopez because at least him, you know you're going to get at least high teens anywhere from high teens to high 20s. Right, right. I mean, that's a, there's about a 10-point difference there, but at least you know you're going to get in that area. And at 4,600, you're almost always going to hit value or just barely miss it. Right, right, right. He's safer. He's definitely safer. So he needs safety instead of taking somebody's Russian roulette style, so that's why I like Rolo. The price is right, and uh, like JC said, you, you know what you're going to get out of him. That's what you want. If he has the upside, he can get you 30. He's done before 35, so um, he can't go to 35, but I doubt it, but he's safe. And I think at power forward, you could probably the riskiest play being uh, Miratek, Miratek it hit 6,700, but I think you you could damn near go with any one of these guys at the power forward position on either team. With you know, yeah. Miritic, Mark Cannon, Morris, I think you know, Portis could be a good play the way he's been playing lately. I think Mike Scott's been playing great. He's uh, definitely going to be a little amped up tomorrow if you get into that kind of narrative. Um, right. Not going to get into all that narrative talk because. <laughs> Had a lot of that in our chat today. It was kind of entertaining. Yeah. You know, and small forward, you definitely take your pick between uh, Porter, Obrey Jr., Valentine. Obrey is a, a nice pick at that price at 4700 I mean, Porter, he's been playing lights out. I mean, he has been kicking some ass lately. Yeah. So, I mean, definitely worth that price. Like you said, you... Beal, Holiday. I love Holiday at his price. I mean, right now, you're looking at getting probably damn near the same amount of points out of Holiday as you are Beal. Right. And at a, a very nice discount. And the point guards, Wall is looking real good, although that price is up there at 9300 And chances yeah. are, I think, that we're Chris Dunn, he will be out tomorrow I believe so that does make Grant a nice play at 4300 so there are some good value plays here in this game if you want to go with the all day slate this is definitely I think you can get some nice value plays out of this and then you got some good uh, potential late night hammers to fall back on with the uh, late night game of the, the Philadelphia Phoenix game there so that's the only person I would, the only person I would pay up for is probably Bradley Beal because he's in a big spot against them. They give up like close to sixty um, DK points to that position, uh, Chicago. So, but the holiday's long, so I don't know. But that's the only person I probably would pay up just by analytics standard. 
Yeah, I, I see what you're saying, exactly. That's it. I have no, no say on this game, none at all, basically. Yeah, I don't have a whole lot of interest in it, but, you know, as we were just sitting here going over it, and I'm looking at the potential value with, like, Grant at 4,300, and even, you know, with Holiday at 53, and there's some decent, you know, Valentine, Valentine or Valentine, whatever, 4,300, over a 47. I mean, there's some decent cheap plays here. Mike Scott at four grand. Right. You know, even Lopez at 4,600, what he could possibly do against Gortat. Right, um, right. You could stock up on some pretty nice, you know, if you're playing multiple lineups anyways, and you wanted to go ahead and try one, you could do a, a pretty good value lineup here, stacking with this game. And like I said, if you like to do that, and then I know I personally like to have some late night hammers. I hate doing all early plays, and then and you see this happen a lot in every tournament. And then you just watch your score go down. You may be up in the top ten or top five or whatnot, and then you just watch it go down to nothing. So I love having those late night hammers, and with that late night game being Philadelphia, granted on a back to back, but Embiid is supposed to be playing, and he'll be on fresh legs, and they're facing Phoenix. Right, right. So I think you've got some good plays in that late night hammer game, and you can get some good value plays in that game. So this could be an interesting three thirty game and a late night game could be an interesting stack. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I like that. I like that concept right there. That's uh, very strategic. So I like that. Um, yeah, I'll look into it. I'm not playing the all day myself. So, I mean, with people that are playing. Um, yeah, it's, it's yeah, just a, a different, you know, a concept to, to look at or think about if you're doing multiple lineups. It's just right, a, right. an interesting little thought. You can get a lot of value out of, like, like JC said, the Washington game. Um, yeah, a lot of value out of that game. And then you could go with spend at the, with the uh, Phoenix-Philadelphia game. That gives you some money to uh, spend on Embiid and possibly even right. Simmons at the same time. Yeah, I'm not going with Simmons, though, but yeah. But you know what I mean, or even Booker or T.J. Warren as well as Embiid right. or somewhere along those lines, if, if you could possibly spend up and get those three as well as some good value plays out of this Washington uh, um, Chicago game, that could yeah, work out pretty nicely. Idea. Not a bad idea. I'm going to have to try to do a lot of it, man. Talk me into it now. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, I think I... Because as soon as you said that, I was like, damn, I think I've talked myself into this. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to do a lineup. I, I wasn't planning on doing a lineup for, um, for the all day, but uh, I might throw one in. But the strategy I use uh, for like the early and like an all day straight, like something like this, is I don't put them into uh, um, contests. I do double ups and triple ups. Uh, yeah, so at least, you know, I have to feel, you know, if I win, you know, I don't have to win the whole thing, but I'm going to get the same amount of money as the person that came in first. I've been doing this strategy for a little while, and it's been working. My bankroll has uh, increased. I, I explained the strategy to JC. It's a, I, I'll write it down, whatever, but it, it, it works. If it works, it works. But, uh, yeah, that's what I've been doing. So if I did the main slate, I would do... A triple up, probably something like that. Actually, you said something about writing that down. You could do that if you get time and you're up to it. You could put out an article. We could post it up in the group. Right, right. Okay, yeah, I can do that. I'll find time. Look at you. I'm just putting more work on your hands. (laughs) (laughs) That's all right. I mean, I'm snowed in. I ain't going nowhere, so it's okay. It's definitely okay. Definitely okay. So, yeah, and I'm, I'm home alone. <laughs> and like you're talking about the, the cash the lineups that you do for certain types of slates, and I I generally play much more GPP 
trying to get more into the cash. And here with this uh, early slate, where it's a two-game slate, we got Minnesota at Indianapolis, Brooklyn at Boston. Uh, our mutual lineup that we did was GPP, basically. And you also did one that was uh, basically a cash lineup, correct? Because that's what you yeah, prefer yeah. to do on a like right. a two game slate like this. Yes, yes. For a two game slate like this, ugly as it is, I'm gonna play cash. I'm not gonna go like I explained to J C this is my own theory, so I can't prove it and I, I doubt if I can anyway, or anybody allow me to. Um I think a lot of these sharks out here um, these single entries that like whatever is like a dollar you can win five thousand ten thousand dollars they have more than one account so if a person might have 30 or 40 accounts so they're in that single entry with 40 different lineups so it's hard to win those so what I realized is that wow I just start you know going triple ups and double ups uh, so I can you know you know have to feel so that's what I've been doing, especially on, like, express slates and, um, you know, short slates like this. This is what I do. This is my own strategy. I told somebody in uh, the chat today, I got I got a different style than everybody else. So this is what I, I do. I think it's safer if you're playing something like this. Now, on the main, yeah, I do trip-ups and double-ups, but I do play single entries. So, but, yeah, I know my concentration I'm almost guaranteed to hit a double up or triple. That's how it's been looking. So I love that to know that that whatever I lose in my singles, that I, I probably will make it back in my double up. So or triple up. That's my strategy, that's all. So as we cover this early slate, we're gonna do as we always do, we'll share our uh, our mutual dummy lineup here and then as we get through it, then before we go on to the main slate going to have uh, Keith share his uh, cash lineup with you as well. Right, right. So you can uh, get an idea and see the difference in the way that and it might not seem too different because it is a four you know, I'm sorry, two game slate, but right. I'm sure you'll notice a little bit of a difference so you can see what we're talking about. But, you know, starting okay. here at the point guard with this slate you got Kyrie. He's bumped up there to 9,100 now. That's that's one chalky boy, if you ask me. And uh, on a slate like this, you're going to be choking on chalk. <laughs> and there's not much you can do about it. You got to find, try to find, in a GPP anyways, the difficult and challenging part and what makes it fun and exciting is you have to be able to find at least one to two good solid value plays I think I agree because you can't avoid chalk you're going to have to take chalk now you you got to try to find some of the lesser chalk and you have to find a minimal of two good solid value plays. That's correct. the trick. Correct, correct. Now, like, correct. to me, if you want to win in this, to me, you have to fade Kyrie Irving. I think so. That's going to be 89, 90% owned. <laughs> At, yeah. ni at 9,100, he's got to score pretty damn high just to get you 5x. Right. When you instantly drop down to the next player, who is a major cut in price, 6,600, and that's Darren Collison, who's been playing solid ball. That was our first pick at point guard for Indiana, right. facing Minnesota. He's at home. To me, I think that's just an all-around better, smarter play. Kyrie Irving is too much money to pay up his price. Uh, the Nets are not that bad um, defending the point guards. Uh, and, and just 
like JP said, you're going to have to take short. You're going to have to. Let's say, for example, just one quick example. Jimmy Butler's on this play. Um, if you don't have Jimmy Butler, he gets you 60, then you automatically lost. So it's certain chalk. A lot of people are going to have the same line. But the difference is what are the value plays that you put with the same chalk that everybody else is going to have. Like, like JT said, Kyrie Irving, probably 90% owned. So you take Kyrie Irving, you know, you, everybody else is there with you. Now, what you bring around Kyrie Irving is what's going to separate you from everybody else. Who do you take? Do you take the next chalk person, or do you take a nice value play that might get you 30, and no one else is going to take because they're trying to take all the chalk. Now, on this two-man slate, or two-game slate, excuse me, you can take all the chalk you want, but that's not going to take down GPP. That's my opinion. Yep, I agree with you completely. Oh, to get back to Carlson, yeah, I really like Carlson. Really, uh, like, um, um, you can attack, um, Minnesota guards, so. Tyus Jones, uh, in this case. Yeah, Tyus Jones. Jones is too small. He don't really play defense. I don't kill anybody. I see him in college play. He don't play defense. So, Carlson should, should be able to eat him alive, so I like that. Yeah, and I, I think Tyus Jones tomorrow, he would be a good pick. At 6100 his price is, you know, a little up there because of how he's played as a starter this year. But I do think because of how he's played, and he has proven himself when he's in there as a starter for Minnesota, that is another one that's going to be probably the next chalkiest player right there with yeah. Kyrie Irving at, at a point guard. Yeah, and I won't pay, pay 6100 for him either. That's too much money. For a guy that was a bottle feeder for three weeks ago, he was bottle feeder. Now you got to get, he has to put six times value, you got to get 30 something. So, no, that's okay. I'm good with him. Good. Now, this is where, is when the point guard comes up, this is where you start to try to find a value play. And your selection is very, very thin here. You got Spencer Dinwiddie. He's been playing pretty solid ball all year. He's averaging uh, 28.3 fantasy points per game. He's facing Boston. Kyrie Irving, who is known in the past as not being a very defensive or very good defensive point guard, yet this year statistically is ranked in, uh, I, I believe, probably the top three in the point guards defensively. Top five. Top five. Top five, five. all right. And Boston is still, I think, in the at number one defensively as a yeah. team. And so, you know, d does that keep you away from Denwitty? Is that somebody you want to take that chance with? He's at six grand. Or do you drop down and you look at uh, Corey Joseph? You know, Tyus, um, Tyus Jones, he's a backup in Minnesota to begin with, and now he's starting. Right. So, so who's going to be backing him up to try to stop Kojo for Indiana or you know him at 4500 you're looking at what 20 21 22 points for 5x right that's a that's a pretty average game for Joseph I mean he he averages uh 18 fantasy points per game but a, a 22 point game for for Kojo is not that difficult no it's not no it's not um, the backup for Tyler's, um, Tyler's Jones would be Jamal Crawford. They let him play points, so oh, he'll that, be the backup for that's him. That's true. I didn't think about that. But still, I don't think that's all that challenging for uh, Kojo. No, nah, no. Nah, he, he's at a, he's at a, um, he's in a good spot because neither one of them really play defense. I mean, um, he's in a good spot. I like him. I really like him. And then, you know, with our second pick at point guard, we both very quickly agreed the way he's been playing lately and as well as who they're facing. Terry Rozier at 4,100 for Boston. They're at home with Brooklyn coming into town all over. Now, granted, he's another one that I do, you know, we think, as we've said with this two-game slate, everybody's 
pretty much is going to be chalky to a degree. Right. I think it, to find somebody that you're going to consider that won't be chalky is probably going to be 25 to 35% owned. That's yeah, somebody that you could say, well, this guy isn't chalk. <laughs> goes out and kicks their ass and gets Cleveland helps Cleveland work their way to a better draft pick You Nobody wanted to take a, a real, throw a real dart. You might look at Whitehead. <laughs> but you're gonna say Larkin, <laughs> Shane Larkin down there too. So, but I don't know. Well, that I, I, I guess I think there. Larkin. You could go that way, but that's a dart with blindfold on. sarcastically joking around when I when I met or said Whitehead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah Rozier's about as far down as you go before we just jump right on over here to uh, shooting guard and find the the top two dogs that are out. Oladipo mm -hmm. and Russell, which I I'm guessing Russell's gonna be back here soon. I mean, and then you get right down into it, and you look at the uh, the next two top guys: Marcus Smart for Boston, Chris LeBert for Brooklyn. Both of them at fifty eight hundred. I mean, that's the two highest priced available shooting guards in today's slate. And our first pick being Chris LeBert for Brooklyn, and he has been playing some really nice ball lately. And he will be facing Smart, who is known for his defense, but. Still like Levert. I think he's uh, he'll be uh, putting up a. I I see a five x six x, seven x yeah. game. I don't think he goes above seven x, and I see a minimal five x. Right. Uh, I um I hope people you know don't get taken because of Marcus Smart's defense. Because basically, this is where you attack Boston. At they're the sixth worst team. Defending shooting guards, they they're giving up 52 a game. So I hope everybody still thinks that Boston stopped that position, and he and he might be one of those sleepers um, that nobody's going to be on. So and he's been playing well. Um, so I, I hope everybody thinks that. I hope everybody is the same price. So I hope everybody goes for him. The last what the last three games LeBron played, 23 minutes, 35 against Miami. Uh, 31, 31 minutes, 35 against New Orleans. San Antonio, who got locked down defenders, 27 minutes, 29. So, yeah, I want them to keep on thinking that they're going to lock this kid down, and I hope that. I hope everybody plays Marcus Smart and don't play reverse. And as you said about San Antonio with the lockdown defenders, 
it's also well noted that uh, Miami, they are very good at shutting down the guard positions. That's true, too. And he did, as you just said, he lit them up pretty well. Uh -huh. So, I mean, he's uh -huh. having his way with the Miami, with San Antonio, and, you know, as surprising as it is, Marcus Smart is known for his defense. Boston is defensively the number one team in the league. Yet, their weakest spot right now, defensively, happens to be the shooting guard position, which nobody would even stop. If if they did not research it and look into it, nobody would know that or realize that. If Just realizing that they are the number one team defensively, I don't think anybody would ever stop and think that it was shooting guard would be their weakness. That's 100%. Right. Because he is known to be their best defender. Yeah, they they really played bad in the last couple of... I mean, they're going against Harden and whoever else. But um, they jumped over 10 points in the last... In the last 10 games, they're like 13 points more. They're giving up a game in the last uh, five, 10 points more than they usually give up. So right now, you know my narrative, ride the hot streak. And right now, they're, they're basically um, doo doo when it comes to that position, so why not attack that position? So, definitely, that's why uh, we, we like Levert, that's why we went to him. That's definitely what we're suggesting. They're both uh -huh. at the same price. Uh, Levert even averaging 25 fantasy points per game to Smart's 24.1. Not a big difference there, but definitely, I think, overall, you will see a big difference by the end of the day. Right. I wish there was a way I could promise it to you. But trust me, <laughs> I I believe a thank you at the end of tomorrow will be well taken. And then right. you got Andrew Wiggins' game time decision at 5500 I do like that price for him. But that game time decision with the ankle... Everything I've read so far, and this is something you're going to have to pay attention to with uh, with these game time decisions. And with the time, I mean, it's 5 o'clock in the morning right now, so obviously we have no clue. This game's not for, what, another 12 hours. Yeah. So, a long time before news comes out about this. If he does play, this will be a chalky guy. But we made our second pick at shooting guard right from this team, Minnesota. We went with Jamal Crawford at four grand. Right. Right. Jamal Crawford. He's going to see a decent amount of minutes. And that's whether Wiggins plays or not. I mean, last two games alone, Teague has seen 26 minutes in both games. Or not Teague, I mean Crawford. And granted, he hasn't scored very well. I mean, 15.7 in the last game against Milwaukee, 19.7 in the previous game against Denver. Right. Uh, uh. But well, as, with Crawford, if you look, no. though, I mean, 21, 14, 29, 29. I mean, he can, he can light it up at any given moment. Just like what um, Vince Carter did. Same thing. He's just going crazy. But another thing with Jamal Crawford is like he'll be playing backup point to, to um, Thomas Jones. So he'll be on the court a little longer besides playing. Wiggins doesn't play. He's on the court for 28 minutes to 30. If Wiggins plays, um, he's had a great spot. Wiggins is definitely in a great spot uh, with that price. But even if he does play, Crawford still should play about um, 26 minutes. Yeah, so I was going to say mid-20s. Yeah, about 26 minutes. So he could do his thing. I wouldn't um, shy away from that. Even though Wiggins might play, I wouldn't shy away from it. Yeah, I just if Wiggins doesn't play, then Crawford, to me, could easily be a steal a and the uh, sleeper pick lock. of the day. He's a lock. If Wiggins doesn't play, he's definitely a lock. On this two-game slate, He's definitely a lock. If Wiggins doesn't play, Crawford sees 30 minutes 
I'd say minimal. Yeah. Thirty plus. Thirty plus. And man, if his three is going down, then <laughs> having right. him on the right. team will be a blessing. Yes. Well, Got to well, admit. He goes to the line. He's the king of the four point play, so hopefully he gets like two or three of those in the game, and then he pays off his price tag. After him, um, to me, there's nobody. The only other player I would even consider would be Nick Stauskas of Brooklyn, and I would totally fade him at the moment because you have no fucking clue if he's going to play or how minutes, he, how many minutes he's going to play. I guess right now you could say he's going to play if you look at the last few games. You know, it's 15 minutes, 23, 11, 13, 15, 3, 15, 28, some zeros in there. Seven, uh, eight. I mean, <laughs> he's a bad defender. He doesn't defend well. You take him one on one. Everybody just moves to the side, and whoever's checking that he's checking, they, they if you watch the games that he do play, they taking him one on one. They're not pulling up jump shots. They going in the middle of the, the of the lane and either pulling up eight feet away or just going straight on. He's a terrible defender. That's why he don't get playing time. That was a bad trade on him. You got fat, sloppy, open foot. And you got this guy that everybody's picking for. That's why he don't play. So anyway, that's my own personal. Well, fact. actually, I did not realize that about him personally, his defensive play, until you said that. And I'm, I'm looking down at his game log, and it, you got to go back six games to December 22nd against Washington before he had a, his last steal. He had one steal, and in that game, he had one rebound. He had, he, he's had no blocks in those six games. And the most rebounds he's had in those games are three. So th there's not much, unless he, he has hit his scoring. Like the one game, he had 21 points. In the game I'm referring to, he had 15. And those are his two highest fantasy scoring nights. And he needs somebody to give him the ball to score. That's, he's almost like a J.J. Reddick. And um, I, I just don't think he can he's, – he's not net material. He's not tough. He, he, he gets bullied. If you look at the Nets, how they play, they got bullies on them teams. So, so everybody on that team is a bully to the extent. They bruisers, they bullies. Um, he's not a bully. <laughs> so he doesn't really fit the next scheme. And like you said, he has no peripherals. One steal, whatever. He's not a good defender. And I, I watch a lot of basketball. He's not a good defender. And I've seen him play in Philly. He's not a good defender, serious. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at a game here against Sacramento. Three minutes he played, he got three points. And that was it. Three, uh, yeah. He had uh, three, obviously made a three-pointer, got three fantasy points. In the game prior to that, he played 15 minutes, had three assists, four and a half points. Right. And whoever he was checking, especially on Sacramento, Buddy Heal or one of them probably lit his ass up. And that's why he took him out. He's not a good defense. He's too small. He has to play the point. And they're not going to play him at the point. When he got dim with he played a great point. You know, and they don't use him as, they use him as the two. Um, so, I don't know. Maybe they should play him at point. He might do better at the point. Who knows? Who knows? I, I'm just saying, if anybody else down that list, he'd be the last. But, and and uh, he damn near doubles everybody's yeah. uh, fantasy yeah, points per game sure. that's below Crawford. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Everybody else, I don't even know who those people are. Those, those are missing action. Look at their minutes. They only get minutes, so they missing missing action. So yep. if you play one of them down there, you might as well put the bullet in the gun and spin the chamber. Seriously. So right after Crawford, it just screams, jump on over to the small forward and right into some chalky Jimmy Butler at 8,800. Mm -hmm. And that is yeah. a lock. <laughs> yeah, Butler's lock. I'm telling y'all that now. Butler's lock. I'm locking it into my one lineup on this ugly slate. Butler is my chalk. You got to pick good chalk. It's going to be chalk. So you have to take chalk. Then you have to pick good value around the chalk. So I'm taking Butler. 
at the same result for Kyrie. Uh, he might outscore Kyrie. You know, Butler had 60-point upside. Kyrie doesn't really have 60-point upside. If he gets you 60 points, that's the greatest game in his whole life. Butler does. Butler can have a sloppy game and get you close to 60. So, yeah, we locked Kyrie him Kyrie seems to match. play like that mostly against San Antonio. I mean, they're not giving up a lot of points. Um, they're going to put what, Boban on him and whoever else on him. Um, yeah, I, I, I'll take my chances. Even they're going to put Lance on That's who they're going to put on him. And I'll still take my chances with Butler. That's my lock. He's going to be like 70% owned. So if he fails, that's 70 of us going down. But if he go off, like I'm saying with that example, I want to be part of that 70 that got him. And then I just deviate from, you know, the rest of the line. Yep, he will definitely be in the top three of chalk, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Definitely, definitely, and definitely one that you have to, have to have. I think he is probably the one player to me that is a definite lock. You right. can You can pretty much fade everybody else to a degree, but Butler's the one guy you want to have in your lineup. Mm-hmm. You know, we need about 48 to, about 48. If he gets you 45, you can't be mad. That's all I'm saying. You can't be mad if he gets you 45. But if, I think he's going to get about 48 to 52, somewhere in that range. And that right then and there, if you don't have, and you're 48 or 52 points behind everybody else, because everybody's going to have some fun. With the prices that you can put everybody in your lineup. You know, so um, why not have Butler? <laughs> and then right below Butler, you got Lance Stevenson, who last two games he's been playing pretty damn well in that starting position. They are at home in Indiana where he does seem to play his best ball. He loves playing for that home crowd. And that's yeah. usually when I have used him this year. It's been at home. He will be chalk. He is at 6,600. But we did skip right over him, and we made our second pick at the uh, small forward with the uh, second-year man who is another goat of our big dog, Kyle. And that is Jalen Brown. Yeah. Kyle Boyd. Yeah, one of his yeah, he's many goats. He's yeah, he's in a good spot. No, Kyle, he's not the goat yet. So, uh, yeah, but he's in a really good spot. So, um, going against Brooklyn, um, not much to say. Who are you going to go against? Crab, Harris. Crab's a pretty good defender, Carroll. Um, for some reason, I don't think they'll have Carroll on him. I think Carroll's going to be checking table for some reason. So, uh, I think he's in a good spot. Brooklyn gives it up to everybody. So, not maybe the power forwards no more because Riley's Holly Jefferson is playing, but, uh, I don't, I don't know what they're going to do. With, I, I, I Basically, I don't think the Nova's going to stop him. Let's just put it that way. He's a good pick for me. Or for us. The one thing that does worry me about him is he has missed the last two games due to a knee injury. Yeah, the knee is bothering him. But, uh, but he is going to play tomorrow. And that yeah. is what Marcus Smart will not start tomorrow because of that. And that yeah. will cut into Rozier a little bit not too much I still think everything will be fine with Rozier I just I'm not seeing or have not yet seen anything or heard anything on any restrictions or limitations with Brown but that is definitely right. something we'll need to be paying attention to right right definitely because if he's on restriction I'm not playing him I'm, I'm exactly that's playing. when then we need to uh, make up our minds where do we pivot to? Do we pivot to Stevenson? Do we pivot to Carroll? Or, you know, do we even drop further down to Bogdanovich, Alan Crabb? Well, I don't know about if I want to go to Crabb, but Bogdanovich, Carroll, Stevenson. Um, I probably, we probably go up to, um, to Lance, most likely. Um, yeah, most likely we have to move up. Um, Carroll, doesn't do enough for me. Bo- Boban's interesting. You could go to Boban. If anything, uh, if, if, if Jalen doesn't play, then go down either Boban. Um, yeah, yeah, I would go to Boban. I wouldn't 
won't even go to Carroll. I'll go to the ball because everybody's going to probably go to Carroll then. Because there's nobody to stop him over there. Yeah, uh, and, and Bogdanovich, he's not a, exactly a consistent player, but he's another one. If he can get that ball going in, then, man, he can light it up. Yeah, yeah. He'll get you in the team. I mean, for his price, I want, I want 25, so... I'm hoping, now I'm really hoping Jalen Brown do play. <laughs> <I really laughs> yeah, because I was play. just looking, you know, Bogdanovich would also be facing Butler, which, God, that yeah. could suck. Yeah, he won't get teams then. He won't get anything then. Um, yeah, Minnesota's like the third best defending that position, so that's not even a smart move. So, I mean, I'm not, I probably won't even take Lance. Hmm. That's what I was thinking. I'd probably just go right back up to Stevenson. Well, yeah, we'll just have to stay with him. Just have to just clear that one out. Um, I think that's going to be the chalk play right there for um, small forward Butler and Stevenson. But um, if he's not out, then Butler Brown. But if he's out, Butler Stevenson. Uh, you take your poison down there with Carroll and rest. I mean, they're not going to really hurt your lineup. But if you don't get enough to offset something else, then... Uh, Still gonna be behind the cash line if you don't take if you don't take Jimmy Butler out all these um, small forwards then you really not gonna have a really good chance of winning that's my opinion on that. All right, and then after you know Bogdanovich, you got Crab, Joe Harris, really no interest to either one of those guys, and then after that, there's no interest anywhere except at the power forward position. <laughs> Which we made our first pick at the top dog there at 7,200 for Brooklyn, Rondé Hollis Jefferson, which yeah. that's another chalk play. Mm-hmm. But again, just about every name that we mentioned is going to be chalk, as we've said dozens of times already. All right, all right. It's just, it's just a lot of chalk. Yeah, he's chalk, but you got to put him in there. Boston's. Um, that's his attack. second weakness as a power forward. Power forwards, yes. They, they're mid pack. Um, so you might as well attack. Get something that you attack with. And yeah, he's going to be chalk. There's no question about it. He's going to be chalk. But chalk's going to have to be good chalk. That's it. And then right below him, you got Jason Tatum, the rookie who's been playing good, solid ball all season at 6,200. That's a nice, solid play there facing this Brooklyn team. But he will be facing Hollis Jefferson. Yeah. That would be interesting. I don't think nobody gets him. You I'll got, take nobody gets RSJ. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. Then you got Thad, Thaddeus Young at 5,900 for Indiana. And he would be facing the next guy that we chose as our power forward for Minnesota at 5,800. That's Todd Gibson. And he has just been playing great, solid ball, consistent ball all year round. And if you haven't figured it out yet, Minnesota coach Thibodeau, he loves to stick with his starters and play them heavy, heavy minutes. They all play a lot of minutes. If you look at Taj Gibson's last games, last game alone, 38 minutes. Previous game, 40 minutes. And then 34, 34. um, Least amount of minutes a week ago was 30. I mean, he's up there 39, 40, 39. I mean, they play a lot of minutes, and that's something you can count on. Yeah, that's correct. Um, Thibodeau is a defensive-minded coach. Todd Gibson plays defense, and that's people he loves. The same reason why Butler didn't didn't want him, because he uses the same players over and over and over. But I think Minnesota likes it the way, you know, the rotations are. He doesn't really take them out. And um, as long as you play defense, you have no reason to not be on the court with Thibodeau. Yeah, and then after, after Gibson, you come down, and again, almost time to jump right over to the center. I mean, you got a choice between Sabonis for Indiana, Marcus Morris for Boston, who's still working his way into the rotation, and and back on his feet. There's uh, 
no mention right now of any restrictions right here for tomorrow. So definitely something to pay attention to to see if he's back to full play. No more limitations, no more anything. If that's the case, then he could be a pretty solid play. Um, especially, I mean, he's sitting at $3,900, so that's a steal right now. If he's, you know, lifted of all restrictions and limitations, that is definitely something to look into. He had a pretty good game the other night against Houston. And then after him, I, I don't know. I mean, if you play in multiple lineups and you want to take a couple of chances, you could look at uh, Dang for Minnesota, possibly maybe Quincy AC. And these are, you know, long shots, darts. But at $3,600, you could always look into them if you're, like I said, playing multiple lineups and you want to try something different. Go contrarian. Right. right. Um, yeah, that's, that's basically, you know, in a nutshell. Um, more is he, he's only getting 19 minutes. And he's still in the restrictions, so... Uh, that Diaz kid, no, they no, but Quincy AC, if you look at his game log, he's getting like 20 minutes a game, so if you ever have to go dumpster diving, really, really GPP flyer, go Quincy AC, last three games, 19 against San Antonio, he got you 20, New Orleans, 24 minutes, he got you 24.3, and Miami played 20, but you got 17.9, at 3,600, you can't go wrong, so... I yeah, really at that, I think it's 17 or 18 points. Get you 5x. Yeah, yeah and if Boston blows them out, then he's going to play a lot. So, hmm, that makes me start to wonder about this. I might have to separate myself and put some, at least, well, I'm only doing one lineup, man, so I'm not even doing that. But if I was doing multiple lineups, could the ACB in one, because I know he's going to get playing time because he's in the rotation, and they blow him out. He's going to get all that blowout time. So they blow out by the third, by mid-third, and he's playing the mid-third and fourth quarter, and he's guaranteed to probably get you your value and more. Well, I think if it's even a close game, you're looking at value. If it's a blowout, you're looking at 7, 8x. Yeah, true that. Very true. And then as you know, we move on here to center, you got your top dog, Cat, at 9,800. You know, he, he's been playing great ball. What we were talking about, you know, before we started the recording, he does play his best ball at home. This game is on the road. 9,800. The man needs an awful lot of points just to hit 5X. And he will be chalky as all hell. So, to me, it's a, that, to me, is a fade. Um. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, he he's he is a great player. I just I can't see paying that much for what he would have to get you just to hit value. He is facing Miles Turner, who is a pretty damn good defender. And right below, you know, Turner's right below him at seventy five hundred, and then right below Turner at a hundred dollars less is Al Horford, who is facing the Brooklyn defense and the Brooklyn centers who. Tyler Zeller, um, Okafor, who won't even play, Mozgov, who may visit the court for a few minutes. <laughs> yeah, Lurch. 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 So, I yeah. mean... Okafor is no court play. We yeah. made our, our picket center with Horford... That to me is seventy four hundred dollars. That's a lock. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's a lock. Uh, with Cat, Cat ninety eight, he's gonna need about forty seven, forty eight. That's not even his average. He'll be averaging about forty two. So that's no good. And plus the fact Turner, he's a good defender, but he'll run out the three point line with him. He's not throwing foot because he likes to shoot threes too. And he's saying that likes to shoot threes. Going against another player that likes to shoot threes, they usually don't shoot threes well. So that's why they cancel each other out. So Harper is in a good spot. He got to go against, like you said, Tyler Zella, Moscow, the Lurch, 
and Afro Pump, um, Jared Allen. And I see him eating all three of them up for lunch. Plus, goddamn, Lance Stevenson will run up behind him and pull his shorts down, blow in his ear. That'd be something. <laughs> That'd be something. So, our mutual dubbing lineup is Darren Collison, Terry Rozier, Chris, or Chris Levert, Jamal Crawford, Jimmy Butler, Jalen Brown, Rondé Hollis, Jefferson, Taj Gibson, and Al Horford. That's our GPP line, and Keith will share you real quick. His cash line that he came up with, which is? All right, one second, one second. Let's just stuck over here. All right. Uh, oh, and before he gets into that, this is something we've mentioned to you guys before. You always keep in mind you don't have to play up all of your salary cap because at the end of this lineup that we just came up with that I just read to you, we have $4,800 remaining in salary. And that's going to yeah. go in our pocket and go into the bank. And if we do need to make any changes or any pivots or this or that based on injuries or whatever news may come up or last minute changes or this or that, it gives us plenty of money to make those changes if we need to. If not, that money goes in the trash and this lineup goes in to the tournament and comes home bringing us home some money. So always keep in mind, do not feel pressured to spend all of your salary cap. You get the lineup you like, and you run with it. That is correct. That is correct. All right, my lineup, um, I got 2500 left on it, but if, if you move up to cash, it's only like 700 different. So I got Jim Witte, I got Collison, I got Crawford, Levert, Brown, Butler, Tatum, Howard Jefferson, and Harper. Like I said, with that, if you want to, you can move up the cap, but I'm not paying that cap price. The only difference is I took the guard um, because, like I said, Kyle's is in a good spot to begin with. And Jim Whitty, nobody's going to be on Jim Whitty because of uh, Irving's defense. So that's my difference on people. I mean, some are going to have that, but not everybody's going to go there with those two as their guards. So I like that. I like that call. Everybody else is basically short. So, you know, that's how I separated my cash lineup. And I'm only putting this in uh, a double up uh, because all I have to do is just be halfway, like half the field. I'm not going to put this in a lineup and hope it wins it all because I really doubt if, if you hit the big number, or number one, it's going to be 100 of you together. So no one's going to wind up with that pot alone. So if I'm going to share money, I want to share money with the person that's in first place and the person that's in 49, which could be me, I don't care. Plus, I've always been told, or it's been mentioned to me, that if you're going to do a cash lineup, you should always throw it in the GPP as well. Right. Even right. if it's a dollar it's single good. entry, throw your yeah. cash lineup into a GPP because you never know that damn thing could hit it big. Yeah, never know, never know, never know. And I have yeah, seen sure. and heard a lot of people sit there and had a cash lineup that hit damn near 400 or over 400 and you know, uh, how much would this have won me in a GPP <laughs> yeah I hear that all the time a lot shithead <laughs> yeah, definitely all the time all and right. I've learned to do all the right. same thing when we do our phenom free rolls yeah. I always take my free one of my free roll or my free roll play and I always enter it in a GPP Yeah, because we're already an hour in and just now hitting the main. Alright, so let's move on to the main. So um, I can get this damn five games, page to five load games. up. Here we go. Slow ass damn thing. Mm. Alright, starting here at the point guards in this slate. Got Russell Westbrook, 11 9. And then Chris Paul, Kimba Walker. Jordan Clarkson, what are you thinking of these guys? Because I know, I mean, we go down a little ways before we make our first pick here to point guard. What are you thinking of these top dogs here? Um, I like Westbrook. Westbrook's always in play, as I said before. Westbrook's always in play. Chris Paul didn't look that good. Um, coming back, looked shaky. He 
you are still be on like a little man restriction, almost sure of it, guarantee. Give a walk is on the road, so you know how I feel about that. So that's the ball first, so you can go down from there. Yeah, I, I'm a little nervous about Paul and Westbrook I like, especially against Dallas. Um, Clarkson, I'm not all that into. I mean, I like him. I don't like who he's facing. I think it depends on what's going on with Paul as far as his minute restrictions go. If that's being lifted or if it's being raised up, the more time he spends on that court with Clarkson, the less I want to do with Clarkson, especially at 7,200. And we come down, you know, Austin Rivers, he's got the game time decision with that Achilles. Even if he does play, I don't know how much I want to do with him if he's having trouble with the Achilles. And then we do get to our first pick that we went with. And that was Dennis Smith Jr. I called him out the other night. I liked him. He he turned out and played great ball for us. Tonight, or today, he'll be facing uh, Oklahoma City. Westbrook, to me, plays shitty defense. Quite often, we have found that uh, they put their shooting guard, Roberson, on the top point guard to shut him down because that's what Roberson does. He plays top-notch defense. Roberson is out. He will not be playing in this game. I think that automatically puts Westbrook on Smith. I see Smith having another good game. Will he uh, give a repeat performance? Which he did put up um, 44 points against New Orleans the other night on the 29th. Um, I don't know. I would not be surprised if he hits right around the same numbers. Or somewhere between 35 and 45 points is what I'm looking for anyways. It's possible. Uh, I'm going to get back to Jordan Clarkson for a minute. I do like him. Um, but the reason why I like him, he's not going to be playing point all game. They got hard to play points. So if Paul plays, he's going to be on hard. He's not going to be on Clarkson. I will take my chances with Clarkson against um, Harden in a pace up game any day, just to let y'all know. Just think about that. He won't be on point. So if he if he starts the game at point, fine. They're gonna slide him over to the two, and then well, see, Harden's gonna run the point. I see a difference there because I think no matter it doesn't matter where he plays. I mean, if you're if you're Dan Tony, wh- who do you want Paul on? Do you want Paul on Hart? the rookie guy or you want Paul on Clarkson and would you rather have Harden who is less defensive on Hart I would uh, well because um, I, I could care less if, if uh, Clarkson's on at shooting guard I still want Paul on Clarkson alright well I, I like Clarkson I, I got a feeling Paul's not going to play that much and I don't really think they're going to have have him running all over the place with Clarkson. Clarkson's more of a go everywhere kind of guard. Or, um, Hart's more of a stand straight up guard. So, I mean, I'm just going by uh, what I would do as a coach. I would put Hart at the point. I don't think and, he's um, going to be restricted tomorrow because they were planning on him coming back tomorrow anyways. Okay. Well, I just like, I like, I like him. I'm not saying I'm playing him, but I like him. I like him because I got my lineup. Uh, one of my lines that I have, I have him in there. He won't be well owned as it is because of the reason you say. And I see him at least getting thirty five. It's going to be a fast, up, uh, up paced game, high tempo game. And he likes to run. So with Kuzma back and everything back, I see him getting at least twenty eight to thirty five. Well, I, I love this. Normally we're dead ass, one hundred percent agreeing on a player, and this one we're not. So. <laughs> Yeah, you know I know we'll mean, be I all like over him. this I, one. I really like it. He's gonna make it. Like I said, out of ten lineups, he'll probably make two. I'm not playing that many lineups, but um, so out of the lines I'm playing, I'm playing six lines, so he'll be at least in one or two. He's still be in one or two, because that's the difference. I gotta deviate myself somewhere different, and um, if anything, he'll be part of my stack that I do for uh, the Lakers, which 
I'm really liking. Oh yeah. And he'll be proud of it. So yeah. if I do do that, he'll be in my stack, in my stack, and my cheap stack with the Lakers, and I can really pop people with the head. Get get get, get good, some good stuff out of that. So I really like um, that. If I stack, I don't know. Like I said, I like them, um, but I, I do like Dennis Smith uh, more. But I'm just telling people don't sleep on Clarkson because he won't be playing point all game long. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, hell, the way it's going, you'll probably have me talked into him by tomorrow afternoon. Nah, nah, because I, I, I'm talking myself basically out of him. But, uh, like I say, I'm going to put him in a lineup. I definitely will. I, I like. I know his number is going to be under 15 percentage. So, I'm trying to separate myself. So, and if he can give me 35, I know that's not his average. But uh, I don't know. His price is up there. He was in the sixes, maybe more. But, um, yeah, I think I'm more of him because of his price. Just because of the price, I think I'm more of him. But anyway, I mean, it, 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 stuff, but, uh, as we keep coming down, George Hill, 5,300. You got J.J. Berea, 52. McConnell, 48. He had a pretty good game tonight. Uh-huh. He's facing Phoenix, who's... Uh, you know, one of the worst defending against the point guards, so that could be an interesting play, although I do think Embiid coming back could take away from McConnell. Um, Andrew well, Harrison facing Sacramento at 4,500. That could be an interesting play. We made uh, our second pick at a player here facing Philadelphia at $4,200, and that is Phoenix point guard Isaiah Cannon really like this guy. I wish they would feed him more minutes. That is for damn sure. But I do really, really, really like what he does with what time they give him. Alright, alright. Yeah, don't give him enough time. Um, Philadelphia is uh, fifth worst at the point guard position. Uh, they give it up over 52. So he, he can put the numbers up. He loves to shoot. And, um, the thing about Philly, T.J. McConnell, I was on him, but I'm off him because if you notice, since Ken has been on the team, they're locking guards down. They're one of the best now in the league of locking guards down. They're, what, what are they? they're like sixth or seventh in the league of locking guards down. So I'm not on the Philly guard. I'm not on him, but, you know, Ben Simmons is in a whole different story because he's so tall, but... They've been locking guards down, so I'm not on McConnell, but Cannon, I love Cannon. He does his thing, so. Yeah, I think he's been playing very good, very motivational ball since he's gotten there, wanting to show his worth and, you know, show what he's he's worth and that he's worthy for that team. And I, I just like him, and I think that at 4,200, he is easily going to hit and will almost always, or at least on a consistent basis, is going to hit value at minimal. Right. And at, at 4200 I, I just, I like that price. I think you can't go wrong. Um, as, you know, we keep scrolling down. You got De'Aaron Fox, who's a game-time decision, coming back for Sacramento. And then right below him, at the same price, you got Frank Mason, so, don't know if either one of those two, especially Mason. I mean, Fox coming back from an injury, not really that interested in something like that. If he does come back, that does take away from Mason. Especially uh, facing Memphis right now with Tyreek Evans and even, um, who was it, um, Harrison. He's been playing pretty good well or lately. So, I, I don't really know if... Um, Either one of these two are worth the play, but at thirty nine hundred dollars, I guess hitting value wouldn't be that difficult. So that that does make them, I get worth a chance if you're doing multiple lineups and you're just looking for a, a, a good punt or contrarian play. Right, I'm not going there, but uh, yeah, I, I'm not. If I got something to die that deep, then uh, my lines are trash. I'm not going there. Um, Cannon is uh, Cannon is like the cutoff right there. I won't go Uless. Both of them, Mason, 
Mason had a good game last time, but it took him 34 minutes to get 20 something. So I'm not into that. This bowling ball felt in, though. Know, Baylor's looking pretty good yesterday. He was in a couple of shots, but uh, he's inconsistent. Uh, Dorwell well might get some playing time tomorrow, too, but he won't get that much. Yeah, so I was going to say the only other two I would really look at would be Jawan Evans and or Sundarius Thornwell for the uh, yeah. Clippers. And that is if Rivers doesn't play. Yeah, only if Rivers doesn't play. But uh, but McConnell, he's um, he's good for DK. That's what I can tell you. He's probably because DK is crazy. Um, so, yeah, McConnell's good over there. But that's his guards. Let's go to shooting guards. Yeah, these crazy guys, which we start off with Harden at 11,000 playing this Laker team. And got to remember, they are at home in Houston. And that means somebody from Los Angeles doesn't get to go play in this game. Uh He gets stuck at the... uh, Somewhat halfway house in Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah, we got to stay indoors because he got no work. He's not working. He got to stay indoors. <laughs> Which, I tell you, if you like Harden, this could be a good place for or a good good time to jump on him. Yeah. Because, well, he'll have he'll have Clarkson on him, I guess. Either yeah, that, Clarkson, either that yeah. or Hart. Either way, he's gonna yeah, have his way. They won't put Hart on. Hart's too inexperienced to deal with what Hart and do to people. Hart will put you on that, on that rocking boat, and that's it. He'll make you tilt over. So they won't do that to him. They won't embarrass him like that. Because Hart will eat him a lot. I, you put Hart on. You you put him on CP3, and I think Chris Paul is gonna have a field day. Yeah, I'm. I'm I'm still, I didn't like the way he came back. That's what I'm going to say right now. I watched that game. He didn't, he didn't show me, you no. Know, he, he didn't do what Steph Curry did or Blake Griffin did when they first came back. He's nowhere near where he needs to be yet. I don't know if y'all looked at that game. He's not ready. They took him out just let Harden run the offense most of the time. He's not ready yet, so. I, th- I mean, I, everybody pumped I think up they, with him. they rushed him back a little, a, a day or two early, I think. I don't know yet. I think it was I, that I, loss I, I, to I'm Boston is the only. If they had beaten Boston, I don't think he played that night. They tried to beat Boston. That's why they probably played him. But they're on a skid now. He has to feel the. I'm. I, I don't know. I'm. I'm really leery about that. I don't know what's up with that. But Harden at eleven, I can do that. I can really do Harden at eleven. So uh, he's always in a good. He's always. He's Harden. So, you know, he, he, he can't beat him. You can just watch him do what he got to do to you. So, that's it. He beats himself. They got them in the games lately. Mental, mental beatdowns. Then right below him, nice little uh, cut in price at 8600 You got Tyreek Evans against Sacramento. And Tyreek's been having a, a nice, solid year. He's averaging what, 34.6. Fantasy points per game. I like him a lot, especially against the Sacramento team. I think he'll have a real nice game. Yeah, yeah, I like him. Um, his price is up there, but he does a little everything on the court. Sacramento doesn't really have anybody to uh, hold him down. Buddy Heels and all those other people, they would have to throw Cameroon on him, and they don't even like playing him, so... Uh, yeah, so he's in a good spot. Yeah, he just got to make him look stupid. And then we take our first pick at shooting guard is right below Tyreek Evans, and that's Devin Booker at 7,800. Uh, I just love this play against Philadelphia, and call me crazy, I haven't looked at the DVP today, but isn't shooting guard a pretty good place to attack Philadelphia? Yeah, it is. Basically, in the last five games, there's the second worst, giving up, no, they're the third worst, giving up 63 a game, they season over 50, and the last 10 games over 57, so yeah, you can say they're one of the worst, they're the third worst. And boy, if 
There were just a couple of guys at the shooting guard position that you could choose from to attack people or team Matt with as the shooting guard. I would have to say Booker's one of the top dogs I would be picking, right alongside Harden. Right, right. As long as they keep his price on the eight, I'm good. But how long is that going to stay? Um, he dropped a forty bomb. His price is going up tomorrow. It's going to be up. So get him while he's um, he's not cheap, but he's cheaper than what he'll be next week. So get him now. Yes, definitely. definitely. And, you know, you got Lou Williams. He's down to 72. His minutes, I think, are going to fluctuate a little bit. I think he could still be a good play, especially if Rivers doesn't play. Hello? Hello? Okay, all right. We cut up for a second. I hear you. Yeah, Rivers doesn't play, then, um, yeah, he's going to play a lot of minutes. Um, he's, he's taking a hit. He's going to take a big hit because Blake's back. So the stats he was getting, he's not going to get any more. Those, half those stats are going to go to Blake. So uh, I'm not with him today. They got to bring his price back down to like 6000 for me instead of playing him anymore. Oh, yeah, I, I agree. And I do think this begins to, if Rivers – doesn't play, then I do think this is the one last good chance to jump on him. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. But, yeah, definitely, like you said, until that price starts to come down, then won't be using much of him. Yeah, yeah. Not, not for a yeah. little while. Then, yeah. You know, as we keep coming... Oh, I was just like, what the hell is that saying with fucking Caldwell Pope? Caught me off guard for a second. And just keep coming down. You got Nicholas Batum, 6,300, facing the Clippers. I think that could be a good, solid play. Um, my biggest suggestion to everybody, and this is because I care about everybody. I love DFS. I love helping people. Fade Caldwell Pope. Don't even think about him. Do not play oh. him tomorrow. I'm begging you. Do not play Don't Caldwell play Pope. Um, Eric Don't Gordon at 5,800. Um, he will not be starting coming off the bench. That's still, it's, you know, six man of the year. It's a good play. 5,800 is not a bad price. Um, you got the same thing with Jeremy Lamb. At 5,500. Um, I don't know about, what do you think about with Reddick and Bogdanovich for uh, Sacramento and, and Buddy Hill for Sacramento? Sitting um, at 54, 49, and 49. Would you like any of these guys? Um, I don't really like Reddick, but I do like Boban, the Sacramento dude. I, I like him. Memphis is, um, what are they? They're they give up only forty four, but they're like mid pack, so I like him. Nobody's gonna be on him. Buddy Hill, they'll, they'll take Buddy Hill before they'll take on Bobon. Mm-hmm. I think Bobon's been playing like thirty minutes a game. Yeah, he, I think he's been out uh, playing healed as of late. Yeah, yeah, he's getting twenty eight to thirty three minutes a game before he nah. He, he doesn't have to do much to make value. Memphis gives up a little bit, so. Uh, and he's long, and he likes to shoot. So I like people like that, long and shooting guys. I like that. So yeah, I believe I like that they moved Tyreek over to the point guard, so it would be Harrison that would be on him. Yeah, Harrison. Well, Harrison's going to be a uh, uh, a little more difficult, but uh, I still like that pick. I still like him. Yeah, I'm with you there. I I could definitely see him in a lineup lineup or two. Yeah. And I, I could see him very low owned because I agree with you. I think a lot of people would go for healed right over top Bogdanovich. And I do think that Bogdanovich is the uh, the wiser of the two choices. Yes, definitely. Sitting definitely. at the uh, same price always. even. And then our second pick at uh, shooting guard today, we went with uh, Wesley Matthews at 4,800. And there is a... Uh, 
some reasons, and part of this is just the way he's been playing, and he he's getting a lot of minutes. He puts in mid thirties every night, basically. Except that, you know, as I say that this last game he played against uh, New Orleans the other night, he played a, a mere twenty nine minutes, but he did put up a thirty one point eight. Uh, fantasy points and he's averaging right now what is it uh basically 22 fantasy points per game he's at uh forty eight hundred dollars he's gonna get you mid 30 minutes as i said facing oklahoma city roberson is out that is their shooting guard balls out too yeah and uh Paul George is out. He's just, he's sitting in a very, very nice spot with hardly nobody really there to defend him and to slow him down or stop him. And to me, that he's a great value play at 4,800. Very difficult to pass up. Yeah, yeah, definitely. He's, um, he's hard to pass up. Like I said, old man's strength. He's that old dude with the old man's strength. If his three-point shot falls, then um, he's really good to go. So, yeah, I, I like Wesley Matthews I, I couldn't shut up about him, but it's because I just, I really, really like this play tomorrow. And I see him very low-owned and quite a, a sneaky little sleeper play. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Because um, I just see that, that you know, the shooting guards out, the small forwards out for Oklahoma. That's two of their best defenders. And um, that just, yeah, he, that opens good. up that whole side of the court for Matthews. Yeah, definitely, definitely. If Matthews does his thing, uh, he'll, he'll definitely pay off his value. Uh, he's cheap, so, yeah, he's going to have a Breenis defense on him. Breenis doesn't uh, bring it, so just remember that a Breenis doesn't bring it. <laughs> yes, that rhymes, too. Breenis doesn't bring it. Um, okay. Yeah, I like him. Hell, by the end of tomorrow, we'll have a rap song. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> now, go down from there. There's some value plays I like down here, too. I know. That's what I was just looking at and going to skip over a lot of these because not too many people we like to play, although one of them that did not make this lineup but will be in several of both of our team's lineups is Hart for the Lakers at 3900 with no Caldwell Pope. Hart will definitely be in the starting position tomorrow. And at $3,900, that's a, you got to play them. It's not a lock, but you got to use them. If you're doing multiple lineups, you got to use them. Yeah, yeah. He's um, he's in prime position to do some work. Like we said, well, I'm, I'm still wondering who's going to check who and stuff like that. So if he gets hard in defense, it's good. If he gets Chris Paul's defense is not good. Um, so either way it goes, he's going to get a lot of playing time. Um, that's and what you want. You want people on the court. I was going to say that, regardless of who is guarding him, is good. Right. Because that is the only way he can do anything productive and score points is if he's on the court. Yep, exactly. You got to be on the court to get points. That's the only way. You really get a negative, at least you're on the court. Something up. You go in the books, you gotta be on the court for that. So you gotta be on the court to get any kind of statistic. Big time. And then we keep coming down. I Kobe Simmons, somebody can look into. I know he's uh pretty well liked, is facing uh the Sacramento team. He has been playing some pretty good ball recently. Uh, right. another good value play at thirty five hundred could check into there's two of them right here at this price and they're in the same game uh Trevion graham for charlotte he is a uh, a pretty good play to look into if you're looking for you know a good value play or you know you need a cheap play and same thing can be said with cj williams especially if rivers doesn't play tomorrow and i know you're pretty big on uh C.J. Williams, especially if Rivers out tomorrow. Yeah, C.J. Williams, Rivers out. I'm locking him in. The T-League player, they're going to give him a contract. 
and send whoever else down because this boy can ball. Um, he'll be on the court. Regardless if um, Rose plays now, he's going to get more playing time than Graham. Graham has to go behind um, Batum, Lamb, and the rest yeah. of them now. So I'm not, um, I'm not even on Graham. So if I get any word that, or we get any word that um, Rivers is not playing, I'm basically locking him in. He will be low owned, low owned, 3,500. You know what you can do is you line up and you got to. Um, uh, the, the only thing problem with that is he's rock, rostered as a shooting guard, but he does play the point. So that's the only problem that you have to give up a shooting guard, a shooting guard spot for him. Uh, it was a guard spot, point guard spot. I don't have no problem with it. That's the only problem I have that he's shooting guard eligible only. I remember watching the other night a game on ESPN. They were playing, and Van Gundy was doing the commentating. And he apparently, at some point, used to coach Williams. Okay. And I forget when, when and where, but I mean, he loved this guy. And he was just going on and on and on about how great of a player he thought this guy was. Okay. And I all just, right. I was quite impressed with all the things he had to say about him. And it, it's had me look at him a lot differently since then. Because I never really knew anything about him or much about him until that game. And I've, I've been paying a lot more attention to him since then. And then you just got done saying some pretty good, you know, talking about him pretty highly. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's a good pick if Rivers doesn't play. I think I got him on my DK line. When I call it out, I'll let you know. Um, but I think he's going to play regardless anyway. And out of all those underneath, um, all the guards that is underneath um, Hart, he's the only one I like to play. That I would play. I'm right there with you, so that's definitely time to move over here to the small forward, which start off there with PG-13, who is out. So then we have the next one up, who is TJ Warren for Phoenix at 7,600. I think, again, that with Booker back, Warren's just, he's a, he's a good, solid play. But definitely yeah. somebody not fitting in on this lineup of ours right here. So we did make our first pick with Brandon Ingram facing Houston at seven grand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Brandon Ingram, somebody got to take KC minutes. So it's going to be split between Ingram, Kuzma. They're going to split those minutes, those extra minutes, with uh, a little bit of heart and stuff like that. Yeah, I remember... Um, KCP still locked up all the way until January 13th. And they'll be on a road trip then, so he has to go meet them anyway. So um, with these extra minutes out there, someone has to uh, absorb them. So it looks like the ones in line are Brandon Ingram and Kuzma. But we are Ingram right now, so that's why we picked them. Oh, yeah. And I expect a, a pretty all-around solid game, as usual, from Ingram. We keep coming down. You got Harrison Barnes at 6,200, Covington at 6,100 on a back to back, and then you got our second pick at the uh, small forward in the same game as Ingram going up against Ingram. 5,200 dollars. You got Trevor Ariza, and this is another guy that is just he lives in the game. I mean, it's like he hardly comes off the court yeah. and it yeah, figures I say that again about another guy who's always in the game and then I go look and the last goddamn game he played was the least amount of minutes he's played in quite a long time and that's 31 minutes and uh -huh. you look at all the previous games it's 38 minutes 43 42 44 <laughs> yeah he gets the minutes so he's always on the court so like we just said you have to be on the court to make stats Plus, he gets you steals. He gets you peripherals, too. So yeah, he, he makes his he's capable of everything. 
Yeah, with him, I think you, you can sit back, relax, and nine and a half out of ten times, you're going to get a minimal of 5X. Yeah, he's definitely a great cash play. Definitely a great cash play tonight. Yeah, and, you know, you keep scrolling down. You got MKG facing the Clippers. Now, that could be an interesting play at 4,800. Never really look at him too often for offense, but he he does have the potential. Yeah, yeah, he does. Uh, he's a defensive specialist, as you know. He locks people down. His offense is still a work in progress, still to this day. Even like it was in college and high school, offense still a work in progress. But he do have signs, flashes that he can go off and get you 30, 35. He's done it before. He just hasn't done it recently or lately. Um, that's because they have so much other people handling the ball. Where Kim will walk up and tunes back. Lamb brings the ball up, holds the ball. So, um, you know, it, it's hard for him to show his, his talent as an offensive player. Uh, and that's what I say about him. And the reason I uh, even really mentioned him is because of how you've talked about him a lot recently because of his defense and how he shut down the Greek freak that night, like you mentioned. Mm-hmm. Now, I know he's at the uh, small forward position, and Williams is at the shooting guard, but do you think that they would put him on Williams? Uh, they're going to put him on whoever's hot. Whoever's hot, they're going to put him on. So, he might be on Lou. So, but, I mean, if Lou were to, to get hot, then that, oh, yeah, that could make Lou very much so very fadeable. Yeah, yeah. I'm not playing Lou because of that factor that if he gets hot the first time out they take, so they come out that time out, MKG going to be on them. And, like, he locked down the Greek Creek, and then the next time he locked down Kevin Durant. So um, you just keep, don't take nobody. He's checking. That's all I'm saying. He on them. I wouldn't take it because they're not going to get their value. They're not going to get what they want. And they big, high-priced person like Lou is, he might, yeah, so, might be in trouble. So Lou's 72, so that's an automatic fade if he's going to get stuck with uh, Gilchrist on him. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going there for just that reason. Even if he checks up for two quarters, that's two quarters of Lou getting shut down. He, he might not even make value, and then he just wastes 7,100 on him, and you're going to be mad. That's, that's what I right love. Now, with DFS yeah. is Kid Gilchrist is $4,800 and at $4,800 he can make you shut down and fade guys that are 7200 or 1200 or you know yeah. 10000 or or whatever yeah yeah there's personal challenges to him because he does get stuck with the best uh, offensive play on the opposite team if they're in his height range they won't put him on no poor zingers or like Blake Griffin or, you know, uh, or Boogie or AD because they too damn big. But anybody around his height, or maybe like a 6'8", because he's only 6'5". I'm sorry, I see him in real life. He's only 6'5". So anybody like 6'8", he got you. So uh, Lou Williams is nowhere near 6'8". He's bigger than Lou Williams. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't take him. I would say him. If y'all take him, it's Russian roulette. That's all I got to say about that. All right. And then, you know, as we scroll down, there isn't much left to me. I mean, the only other real play that I I would see worthy of even mentioning at the moment would be P.J. Tucker for Houston oh. against this Laker team. I, I see him very much playable. You scroll down a little further, Gerald Green could still could be very playable for Houston as well. After that, in the name of our brother, Phenom, family member, Ho-Ho, I yeah, would say right that you could very much so run with Vince Sanity and, and play Vince Carter, but if you had an ounce of fucking brains, <laughs> you would not fucking do it. Quit chasing points, you two-bit stupid son of a bitch. Oh. Love you to death. Oh, Stay the hell right. off, Vince, and quit chasing points. Hopefully you'll listen to us a little bit better than that, especially if you want to win money. 
Love you to death, ho ho. Talk to you tomorrow in chat. And other than that, unless you can think of somebody else worth mentioning, it's time to just jump on over there to the power forwards. <laughs> again? Fourth year option declined. Mm. Was drafted oh, yeah. in 2014. guy because what I'm looking at now I wish there was a, a little bit more to base on him because the last game against Milwaukee he did play 27 minutes but only came up with eight fantasy points yeah he do crap so I mean but then I mean I, 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 you got him here with 12 minutes and 16 fantasy points so I mean yeah, it's, he, job, it's so. a little up and down same time you got him with 17 minutes and three fantasy points. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't do much on the court, but if I know he's going to be starting, then I feel that he's going to get you something. So he's just a dart, a throwing a dart, but that's, you know, that's somebody nobody else knows about. This is, uh, you know, value. Somebody asked me about value today. Uh, I found value just like this through research. So the answer I gave you, is what we doing now. And, this and, um, is a, a potential so, contrarian sleeper play right here, big time. Mm-hmm. Real big time. But that's it. Nobody else over there. Huh, well, he just, his name just went down in my notebook. I will be keeping okay. an eye on him, for that's for sure. Okay. All right, now here at the Power Forwards, start off with Ben Simmons on a back-to-back, which no big deal with that young little boy. 8700 Still like that price for him. But we both pretty much didn't even have to think twice about it. We had, we both did our, our lineups, you know, individually. And then we, uh, we start talking and we come together and we go over the lineups that we do individually. And that's how we get to the mutual um, dummy lineup that we come up with. And we both immediately had the same uh, power forwards. And they're right here on top of each other in the top three. And it's quite simple. Our two power forwards, Blake Griffin at 8,500. And right below him is Kyle Kuzma at 6,500. So those are our two power forwards. And... I, I, hell, after that, I don't even care about talking about anybody else. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's, there's people there, but, uh, yeah, cool. like I said before, someone has to eat up those minutes of KCP, Kuzma, Ingram, uh, and prime spot for that. Griffin, yeah, he's basically not on a minute restriction. He's just going to smash. They got to put Marvin Williams and people like that on him. So, 
Um, they can't put uh, DeAndre Jordan on them. I mean, no, I mean, shoot, what am I thinking about? They can't put um, Howard on them. So, yeah, so he's in a good spot. Kuzma, they put Howard on him. Howard would be fouled out by the second quarter. Yeah, so they're not going to do that. So they got to put, like, Marvin Williams and Kaminsky. whoever else they got down there. I don't even know. Kaminsky and stuff like that. He's going to heat every one of them up. So, um, yeah, he's definitely in all of my lineup. And, and, you know, like we were talking before we started recording, I liked Marvin Williams a year ago, and I still have a lot of respect for him, but his game has gone downhill this year. He old. You're not an old guy. He came out of North Carolina a long time ago. He old. He's been in the league for like 10 years. Yeah. He old. He old. And that's why I see Blake just eating him to shreds. Mm-hmm. Hey, man, Kaminsky. They're going to put both of them on him. Yeah, Kaminsky, he looks like Herman Munster. Yeah, he Herman Munster, and the other guy is Lurch. <laughs> Maritick is Lurch. Not Maritick, uh, Moscow. He, he's Lurch. Yeah. Yeah, he's Lurch. Now, um, Sarek, I wouldn't take because if he's back, Anthony just, his price is so tempting, but, uh, I think a Barnes is going to lock him God, down. Just, put it went down oh, again, no, didn't Barnes, it? Uh, Dirk Lewinsky. Look, when's he going to be on him? So, um, and Zebo, Zebo, you can always get out of Zebo. Dirk is interesting. And, uh, Jermichael Green is very interesting. He came back from injury and he looked pretty good, uh, tonight. But they are back to, he's on a back to back. Dirk's not on a back to back. But those are like, that's it, basically. And Kaminsky down there. But see, I wonder with Green, though, coming back tonight from the injury and then being on a back to back. And he did only play 19 minutes tonight. Right, yeah. So, yeah, I'm just saying he's interested. He, if you find he's playing, he's interested. Um, you know, he's, he's very interested. I always like that kid. Nobody plays him. I, lo- I love playing him. Who, J. So Michael I'm Green? I'm really curious about what's going on with him. Who, Green? Yeah, J. Michael Green. Oh, I, I, like, I played him a lot last year. Yeah. I, 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 I liked how him and, and uh, Zach how those two, uh, yeah. him and Randolph, they played together very well. Yeah, I love that combination. That was like my late night hammers them two together at night. But mm-hmm. uh, now they're on different teams, so, yeah. You know, they face each other, basically. They go against each other. Um, yeah, they, they'll go against each other, so I can't, they cancel each other out. So I can't take Zebra or Green. And Kaminsky's going to be on the court. He has no choice. They got to check Blake. So, and uh, Ryan Anderson, they're back home. And don't want to mess with the, the blind dog, color blind yeah. dog. Yeah, they can't do And like I said, yeah, the seats were red in Washington, but the inside of paint's red, and the pole, and the protective pad they use so you don't kill yourself running into the, the you know, the frame of the basketball, you know, rim thing um, is red. So all that red hurts them. That's why he shot bad again. I'm still going on that. He can't see red and hurts him. So, and everybody talks about that. He's blind. He's colorblind. So, yeah, that's that. But, uh, yeah, so I won't take him. He's home. And everybody else down there, you could take a punt on Wilson, but uh, um, Blake is back. So, Wilson doesn't even get in to play last game. So, uh, oh, and uh, Jeremy Grant. Yeah, I was, I was going to mention him because I do, I like him. I think he's a very potential play. Okay. And I yeah. do, I like uh, the Maxi Clever for um, Dallas. And I like him as a play, 3,600. And I like facing Oklahoma City. I like him going up against Carmelo. There's no uh-huh. defense there against Carmelo. I'm not sure he even see Carmelo when he get on the court, but it's a possibility. Uh, I only played Maxi Pad one time, so um, I don't know. But I got a question: Who you like more, either Jeremy Grant or Powell? Cause I like Powell too. That was in a good spot against Anthony because he moves, he jumps, and he runs. So who do you like more? You like uh, all right between Maxi Clever or um, Powell? Who do you like more, Maxi? Okay. Uh, okay. We agree to disagree. I 
mean, I, I, I even said the other day that he would play. He only played 14 minutes, but he put in 21. So they're playing the boy a little bit more. Um, but yeah, but Maxi is Maxi is good, and um, I wouldn't take Pat Pat. Pat Pat's getting a lot of minutes now too, but Grant's better than Pat Pat. So and underneath there, I wouldn't take Amir Johnson, and nobody else is worth even talking about. I absolutely agree. Uh, so we can move over. Over to the centers, and hell, I'm locked in on one, and that's who we have as our starting center in this dummy lineup of ours, and that is Joel Embiid at 10 5 oh, 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 oh. Yes. And I don't know why I say oh, but I kept meaning to say zero. <laughs> Boy, you can tell it's 6.30. (laughs) Yeah, it's early in the morning. Early in the morning. Wow. But anyway, yeah, John Beers will be locking in, locking load. He will play tomorrow. Or he will play today, excuse me. Um, Yeah, so we're going. To me, until my eyes close and I fall asleep and wake back up, it's still Saturday. (laughs) Uh, That's crazy. (laughs) That's crazy. Um, yeah, so yeah, we're locking him in. There's some there's some good plays uh down here. I mean, Gasol, he's in a good spot, but he's 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 okay. Now, Howard's always in a good spot. Double double Howard. Capella Wow, Howard um, he I mean he, he is facing DeAndre Jordan, so that I think yeah. they they might kind of wipe each other out. Yeah, they cancel each other out. They both gonna get double doubles on each other. Uh, Capella um, let's show how many minutes he's going to get. Um, like I said, DeAndre Jordan's whatever. Willie Colley Stein is too much money now. Um, yeah, Adams did, is did you see what spot. was? Did you realize what was wrong with Capella? No, nah, what's wrong with him? Well, you know how he was missing a couple of games because of the uh, the he had a hurt heel. Yeah. Well, the last few games he's missed is because he had a fractured uh, bone. At his eye outlet. Oh wow! I didn't even know that. Yeah, I just found that out with the game the other night. With Chris Paul came back on what Friday night. Uh, I thought Capella was still missing the games because of his heel, and they had mentioned that it was uh he's missing that game and the uh, previous two games I think because he somehow ended up with a fractured bone right at the uh, eye outlet. As wow. well as the heel issue. And I was okay. like, damn, wonder how the hell that happened. It was like one um, game he came back and played, even though the heel was bothering him, somehow he got elbowed or something. Yeah, it had to be an in-game experience. Now, I'm wondering if they're going to put goggles on and protect that. They might put goggles on and protect that, which makes him ineffective to me because he's going to be very careful. You know, it's like the first time you go back out on something that you got hurt or something like that. You're very careful. So I'm not taking him anyway, but, uh, you know, he, he's back. That's what I'm saying. He's back. Dude. Get back to Willie Collie style. He does too much money. Uh, Adams, you can, you can play Adams, but I'd rather, if I go with all of that, I'd rather play Randall, but I don't have no interest in Randall either tonight. We're going to have some interest in, though. Adams would always play. He's not the star, but he's the automatic. He backs up both of them. So I, I like them. Randall. You like Randall tonight? Well, the way that the coach called him out and came out and said what he had to say about how uh, the minutes with Randall, it was going that way because he felt that uh, Randall wasn't playing up to the – what the hell was it? Up to his standards. Yeah, up to right. his standards and right. this and that. He calls him out like that, and then all of a sudden Randall comes out. What was it? Uh, Friday night. Plays what? He goes up, plays the most minutes he's played since the 18th against Golden State, where he put in 30. He put in 28 minutes, 18 points, 7 boards, 2 assists, 1 block, 1 steal. And 34.4 fantasy points. Right. It's uh, like he I got mean, he got the message. It's not even the message. I'm going to tell you about Walter but right I mean, now. That's the, that's the first game. 
he's had in a while that he's had since the Golden State game that he's had points, boards, assist, block, steal. Okay, okay, so he did good. But let me tell you about Wall. I still won't play him for this reason. What position did Walton play when he was a professional? The same position that Randall played. What could Walton do that Randall do? Randall does everything Walton can do. Walton is jealous of him. Walton wish he could play like Randall could play. And that's the answer to that question. He's jealous of him. Jealous of him. Well, I remember Walton playing power forward but not center. Well, you remember Randall is a power forward. They just moved him to Oh, center. yeah, that's true. Never mind. My I'm bad. I'm telling you, that's the reason why, because Walton wished he had the skills of this kid. Wish that. So any little mistake he makes, he'll put him on the bench. Any little mistake. So, yeah, he got 28 minutes and did everything. What about he go another game and, 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 and he miss up and he gets 8 minutes and 5.7 or, or – or against Memphis, 11 minutes, 8.6. Nah, you can, you can have all that noise you want. I know the reason why his minutes are like that. I don't care what they say. The boy is jealous of him because he got skills Walton never had. Well, never. it is, it is Russian like roulette. Arizona, and he still has those skills. It is Russian roulette playing him. Mm-hmm. But, but I had to get that off my chest. Uh, I could tell, and I'm glad you did. <laughs> That's why we do yeah. this. It's therapy yeah, for us, better, and it's it, it's here to help everybody else the best that we can, and it's therapy for us. All right. I feel much better now, so we can continue, but basically Embiid, everybody else down there, it's some value. I wouldn't play Monroe. I like Tyson Chandler, but you never know. Holmes is going to be kind of chalky. I say he's going to be about 30% Holmes. So, uh, Holmes? Yeah, man. I don't like anybody else. I don't like Bo getting up. And what I saw... Why the hell would Holmes be 30% owned? Well, I mean, they might go after him again. I mean... Oh, that's right. What am I talking about Holmes? He's not even in no more. I think my rent just got on my nose. Uh, no, I was no, going to say, we're, we're sitting here starting in B heat, and you're talking about Holmes being 30% yeah, owned. I, I think my rent just got to me. It was early in the morning, too. Um, the kid I saw, but they don't give him no minutes. I wish they would, is uh, the Asian kid, that Zhu Chow, whatever his name is. I like to see him get some play time. He never get no play time. Don't play him, people. I'm just saying I would love to see him get some play time. Yeah, I like him, but, too, for Houston. I like him. Yeah, I like him. But anyway, that's it for uh, centers. There's nobody else. Yeah, uh, I'm, nobody I'm else. right there with you. There's um, Nene, he is a game-time decision, so it is Rather interesting to find out what happens there. Well, I guess Capella's playing. Never mind. I'll shut up. See, your Randall thing got me going now. Yes, sir. So, there you go. Obviously, we are now done with this, and I will sh share with you our uh, dummy lineup here. It is at starting off with Isaiah Cannon, Dennis Smith Jr., Devin Booker, Wesley Matthews, Trevor Abriza, Brandon Ingram, Blake Griffin, Kyle Kuzma, and finishing up at center with Joel Embiid. And that is it for the fan duel. And our boy Keith here is going to share with us his DraftKing lineup. I got a little caught up in some of the action in the uh, Phenom chat room trying to help somebody with the uh, login to the website. Some troubles they were having, so Keith took care of the uh, DraftKings lineup all on his own. So he will share that with you guys before we get the hell out of here. Okay, all right. Um, like I always say, play at your own risk. But I really like this lineup. I might tweak a little bit. Uh, Westbrook, Ariza, Batum, Griffin, Kaminsky, um, the Bobon from Sacramento, Ingram, and McConnell. That's my DK line so far. I'll change it if I do. You know, I always post it, so you can check back later. Wait, what That's the hell it. was that again? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, my lineup or what I just said there? What your lineup was. I I was oh, reading something oh. and totally missed it. Oh. All right, the lineup again is Westbrook, Trevor Reason, Nicholas Patoon, Blake Griffin, Frank Kaminsky, Boban Bobanovich from Sacramento, 
Brandon Ingram and TJ McConnell, but I'm going to switch something because I want Kuzma in there somehow. I'm going to find a way to get him in there. So I'll probably switch that for uh, somebody for Kuzma or do a little whatever. But, um, yeah, that's my line for now. You can run with it, whatever, but if you lose, I don't want to hear anything. <laughs> I like it. I think it's a, a pretty nice, solid lineup, big time. Much better, yeah, yeah. much, much better than the one I've got at the moment. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, if I change it, I'll put it down. I'll probably put it down anyway, uh, this one. And if I change it, uh, I'll definitely put it down. But uh, right now, I'm running with this until I catch me some Z's. And then when I wake up, I'll figure it out wake up hell I don't even know if I'll be going to sleep because call me crazy I may be an old man but it's fucking happy new year's everyone oh happy new year I forgot all about that and happy new year's everyone I don't know what it's like in New York but here in the uh, Akron Ohio area where I'm from uh-huh. it's party time <laughs> I hear that. And like I told you earlier, I've been to your town. I've been to your neck of woods. So I know your party over there. So when I was over there, I party. So, yeah, I'm just going to relax. I'm going to crack me a beer open, which is going to knock me out. And, uh, I'm, just, I'm about to uh, put my tea away and go crack me a Budweiser. Yeah, it's time to crack I, a beer. I should have said beer unless Budweiser is going to sponsor us. Oh, that'd be nice. That'd be nice. Um, anyway, people, be safe. Um, yeah, just be safe out there, you know, and watch your checkpoints if you are drinking uh, or anything illegal or what you ain't supposed to be doing. Just be careful out there. Um, and be safe and uh, let's try to win a lot of money this year so we can all go on a nice vacation. That would be so nice. Amen to that. And don't drink and drive. Drink, then drive. You, yeah. don't, you don't want to spill it on you. <laughs> I like that. I definitely like that one. Yeah, that's it. That's my New Year's resolution is for all of us to win money and take a nice vacation, all of us together. Like I said, win that money and rent the Playboy Mansion out for a week and trash the place. That's what I want to do. Oh, hell yeah. But all I would need is about 12 hours. Yeah, it won't take long. <laughs> but again, happy New Year's, everybody. Have a great day. Kick some ass. Make sure you guys leave us some uh, thumbs up. It lets us, Keith and I know that uh, we're doing things the right way. Also want to let you know. Uh, it was brought up a lot today, actually, in the uh, chat room on the website. Um, I had mentioned it to Keith starting on Friday when we start next week's podcast. We are also going to add um, the Yahoo DFS NBA to our uh, podcast. We will add a uh, dummy lineup from Yahoo, and chances are, as we do that, Keith tends to put a DK lineup in the uh, comment section. I will do that same thing with the uh, Yahoo one, and we will go over that as we do the DK one at the end of our podcast, and kind of talk a little bit about it as we go through all the players through the FanDuel thing as we do the DK thing so just to let you know we will be covering that starting Friday so that we're covering uh, Yahoo, FanDuel and DraftKings trying to help everybody as much as we can that's what we're here to do got any questions leave them in the comment section we both check back as often as we can to try to answer anything and everything you have so have a great day congratulations to all the winners from last night Let's go kick some ass today. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year.